Today, I'll be sharing my experience on the Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printer. This is not going to be a review about the technical specifications of the printer. This is going to be about the end user experience and a comparison to the many 3D printers I've used over the past decade. Before I start, I want to let you know I purchased the Bamboo Lab P1S myself and I have no affiliation with the company. So I've used this P1S over the last four weeks every day for my business. And I'm going to talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what I would change, and my overall conclusion about the 3D printer. So I'm going to start talking about what I like about this 3D printer. And there's a lot to like. But the thing that really impressed me right out of the box was its speed. I've used a ton of different 3D printers, and this one blows all the others completely out of the water. Prints take a fraction of the time, which is an absolute game changer. It allows me to prototype ideas in hours. In fact, I was able to prototype and print a 3D printed kit for an after school program I run, and then print nine of those kits all in one day. There is no way I could have done this on one of my other 3D printers. The next thing that really impressed me is that even with that really high speed, the print quality is exceptional right out of the box. You see this 3D printed print in place hinge? It popped off the gold plate with zero resistance. In fact, some of my tolerances on my prints that were designed for my previous 3D printers were too big. For example, this lid fit perfectly when I printed it on my previous 3D printer, but falls off when I print it on the bamboo because it's much more accurate. In my opinion, there's nothing worse than a 3D printer you can't trust. The P1S just works. At least so far, I just push print and it prints. Imagine that. It even caught an error that I made when I didn't put the bold plate back on correctly and prevented a possible really major error and possible damage to the 3D printer. I do want to be clear though, I have had some errors in failed prints, and I'm going to be talking about those in the what I don't like section. So keep on watching. The next thing I want to talk about is the ease of use. 3D printing can be very intimidating for people when they first get started. So it's really important to understand whether this printer is easy to use or not. From hardware to software, the Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printing ecosystem simplifies the process. One of the most frustrating challenges of 3D printing often is the manual bed leveling during the setup process. Even the so-called automatic bed leveling systems require you to set the Z offset manually. The Bamboo Lab P1S completely automates that entire process. In other words, there's no user interaction and it just works. Furthermore, I mostly use the Bamboo Lab filament, which is great with the AMS because it comes with the RFID tag. So all the filament settings are automatically synced with the slicer for you. In my opinion, the less settings you have to configure yourself, the easier it is to use. I personally really enjoy using the Bamboo Lab slicer software. I recognize I've been using slicer software for over 10 years. So someone who's just starting, there would be a steeper learning curve. However, that would be the case with most slicer software. And I enjoy Bamboo Lab slicers ease of use, as well as the ability to configure more advanced settings. The slicers ability to remotely monitor the 3D prints, cloud printing and ability to remotely control the 3D printer creates a great workflow. The cloud printing allows me to start a print from anywhere in the world, and the remote monitoring gives me peace of mind. There's even a mobile app for the 3D printer where you can monitor your prints from your phone and even get notifications popping up on your phone when the print is complete. So I have the automatic material system on my 3D printer, or AMS for short, and there are a couple things I like about this. First, I like being able to have four filaments loaded up at any time and ready to go. And from my slicer, I can just choose which one of these four colors I want to start printing with. I find this feature really convenient because it means I don't have to go down, wait for the printer to heat up, unload one filament and load in the next. I can just hit print 
and choose the color. Secondly, as I said earlier, I've mostly used Bamboo Lab Filament, which has that RFID tag. That RFID tag allows me to sync all the filament settings automatically with the slicer. Another great feature of the AMS. All right, so I've told you a lot of things that I really like about this printer, but it's far from perfect. I'm gonna start by talking about the AMS. My biggest issue is how much filament the AMS wastes during multicolored prints. The reason for this is that every time it changes colors, it has to clear out the nozzle with the old color before starting with the new color. This means some smaller prints end up actually using more filament and waste than you use for the actual print. I can't sleep at night wasting that much filament. So I actually haven't done many standard multicolored prints. However, I have found a way to make multicolored prints without wasting so much filament. And the way to do this is by breaking your model into separate parts. And then instead of printing by layer, print by object. This makes the printer print all the objects of one color first, and then it switches color once and prints all the objects of the second color next. This saves a ton of time and reduces the amount of wasted plastic a lot. The one drawback to this approach is you can fit far fewer parts on the bowl plate. Comment below if you'd like to see a more in-depth video about this approach. As I said earlier, while overall I found the machine to be quite reliable, I have had some errors and some failed prints. So the first error I got was an error where it said the filament had not unloaded correctly from the AMS. I looked at the back and I found the filament looked like it had unloaded correctly. The printer wouldn't continue printing and the AMS was flashing lights. So I had to shut down the 3D printer and restart it to get it going again. The problem with that is you lose a print. The second but related error had to do with the filament cutter, which the error said it was jammed. However, when I went to manually unjam it, it didn't see them jammed at all. These errors kept on appearing for a while, but after moving the cutter back and forth and unloading the filament manually and restarting the printer, I eventually got it working again and I haven't had the errors pop up again. As I said, I did have a bunch of failed prints, but they were for one reason and one reason only. The failed prints that I had were all coming unstuck from the bowl plate mid print. And the reason was my designs had a small surface area touching the build plate. How did I fix this? I added a brim. And once I added a brim and increased the surface area touching the build plate, the prints consistently worked. It was frustrating that I couldn't predict for sure whether there was enough surface area touching the build plate, because sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But a brim solves that. And for the most part, it's easy to remove. So another disappointment is the camera quality, the time lapses quality, and the remote monitoring. I said I love the remote monitoring, which is true. However, it's very jerky and the quality is not great and it, you constantly have to restart the system. I recognize the reason for this low quality camera is to bring the price down. And if I wanted a high quality camera, I could get the X1 Carbon, which is more expensive and better quality camera. Along the similar lines, I really don't like the screen. It's a very simple screen with a user interface that is not exactly clear. However, I recognize it's another cost saving mechanism. And if I want a nicer screen, I can get the higher level Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And honestly, I don't really use the screen that much because I use the mobile app. It has a full color touchscreen and you can do everything from the app that you can do on the screen, except print from the SD card. So let me talk about what I would change about this 3D printer. And of course, there are many improvements I would make to this 3D printer, but most of them would increase the price. And that's not worth the trade-off, such as the screen and camera. However, there are some changes that I would make that are quick and would really be helpful. And the first one is with the AMS. I wish the AMS remembered the last filament it used in the last print so that when it started a new print with that same color, it didn't purge out any material. Take a look at all this purged filament from the back of my machine. How much of it is one color and one color only? 
all those were unnecessary. And that would be a simple change for Bamboo Labs to make that would save filament. My second improvement, I wished error messages automatically popped up on my phone, just like the print complete notifications come up. When I had errors on this printer, the only reason I realized it is I opened the app on my phone and I saw there was an error. There may be a setting to turn this on, but I can't find it easily, so it either has to be easier to find or you can't do it. Of course, there are changes I'd make to the slicer software, just like all slicer software, but that's a video in itself and I'm not gonna go into that now. All right, would I buy the Bamboo Lab P1S again? You can probably already tell the answer is a definite yes. Its blend of speed, quality, reliability, and ease of use right out of the box, all for under $1,000, is unparalleled to any other 3D printer I've used before. While there are cheaper alternatives, the performance doesn't even come close to the P1S. If you're looking for a 3D printer that just works right out of the box, this one, the P1S, is a really good choice. So the real test of the Bamboo P1S will be after a year. I personally have found that after a year of printing, that's when most printers have problems, need maintenance, and start breaking down. But the reality is by that time, there will probably be many new 3D printers on the market that are actually better than this for the same cost. And I'm really excited to see what those 3D printers will bring to market. Back when I started 3D printing in 2010, there was the dream and thought that there would be a 3D printer in everybody's house and you'd order something online and it would just print in your home. We're not there yet. However, printers like the Bamboo Lab P1S are a step in that direction. And we'll see if 3D printers become as common as 2D printers. Until next time, don't forget to learn and create every day.